Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. I'm recording this on the night of January 4th, 2024. And today, uh, QuantumScape went up 43% by the end of, uh, at the close of trading. At one point during the day, it was up almost 60%. So it jumped almost 60% in a day. And why did they do this? Um, it's because Volkswagen the night before released a press release talking about how PowerCo, which is one of their battery subsidiaries, has been testing the QuantumScape um, Series A battery cells. There, there's a 24 layer solid state battery that they've been testing for several months. And what they did is they put that thing through 1000 charging cycles and they did fast charging and everything like that. And 1000 charging cycles is equivalent to half a million kilometers if it were a car sized battery. I mean, half a million kilometers is about 311,000 miles. So that is a lot of miles and it it uh, significantly exceeded their expectations. And at that, at the end of a thousand cycles, it still had 95% of its capacity. Now you guys remember if you've been with the channel for a long time, it, almost two years ago to the day, I did a video about solid state batteries because solid state batteries are in many ways the holy grail of batteries. They are uh, more easily recycled, they're much safer, they charge fast, and they have lots, they have long life. They they don't degrade, um, so they can have um, lots of cycles. I mean, theoretically, you could have thousands of cycles, and you could have a battery that maybe lasts a million miles. And you can fast charge it, and it's just very safe. So it's, it's, it's good in many respects. So there's several companies working on this, QuantumScape, Solid Power, a couple of others. And um, at the end of that video, I said that I thought that wild, wide scale, wide scale um, availability of solid state batteries and EVs would probably happen around 2030. Um, it is 2024, so that's six years away. And based on this, maybe it's going to come a little sooner. Now, they still, this is still a prototype battery. They have to go through series B and C and then go through commercialization and then do large scale production testing. So I think it's still several years away but maybe it'll happen in 2026 or something. So maybe it's only two, three years away instead of being five, six years away. Uh, so I thought we would review uh, solid state batteries. All right, so this is the website for Solid Power. This is an American um, company that was started in Boulder, Colorado. And they're one of the big leaders in um, solid state batteries. And in this website, they talk about some of the major advantages of um, solid state batteries one is the biggest one is that they have higher energy density they're likely to have two to two and a half times more energy density per same weight um, than the current lithium-ion batteries so you know for the same amount of weight that we would get in uh, like an aptera 400 you know uh, mile battery we would get like 800 or 1,000 miles with the same amount of weight, which would be great because it lowers the weight of the car, which increases the efficiency and the handling of the car um, while um, still giving it a lot of range. They're safer because um, lithium-ion batteries have a hydrocarbon electrolyte, um, and those things are very flammable, and so that's why you have the you know, burning batteries. Um, they theoretically have a longer life because they can withstand higher temperatures and uh, they can fast charge easier. And they're supposed to, if, if they can work out the kinks, they take less material and are theory, theoretically easier to produce, so they would be cheaper. So, I mean, in many ways, they're uh, a lot better. And that's why lots of companies are very interested in these solid state batteries and if you look if you click this about button and you go down here and you can see all the people that are involved with solid power bmw and ford are big investors and partners hyundai has also um, invested in solid power as well as a123 systems which uh, those of you guys who are aptera uh, long time aptera followers uh, we'll remember that A123 Systems was supposed to be the battery supplier of the original Aptera um, several years back. There's a couple other companies that are um, uh, big names. Um, one is QuantumScape. QuantumScape is, I think, they're based out of the uh, out of Silicon Valley, and VW Group is a major partner for them. 
and as well as an undisclosed top 10 auto manufacturer, uh, which they put in their um, SEC filing, but they did not disclose who it is. So VW Group, which is, you know, I think the largest, if not the second largest uh, manufacturer of cars, they're in with QuantumScape, and the other one is Factorial Energy, Hyundai, uh, Mercedes-Benz, and Stellantis. Um, have partnered with Factorial. So it looks like all the major car manufacturers, Toyota has not joined because Toyota is making their own v, uh, solid state batteries. They're developing their technology in-house. And you may remember uh, this from September 6, where they had their first prototype um, solid state battery uh, vehicle and they were testing it. This was just September of this year. Um, so, I mean, it makes it seem like these are right around the corner because they're already testing a prototype vehicle with solid state batteries. So first of all, what are solid state batteries? So here is a schematic from Dragonfly Energy um, about how lithium ion batteries work. Um, so this is a lithium iron phosphate battery. And the way it works is there's lithium iron phosphate in the cathode. And when it's being charged, the lithium ions traverse the separator. So there is a liquid hydrocarbon um, electrolyte in this battery. It's, there's a porous separator that the electrolyte can, uh, is a, like it's soaked in this electrolyte. And then the lithium ion batteries go across here and go to the anode. The anode is usually graphite and it lodges. And then when it's being discharged or when the car is being driven, it, the lithium ions and the electrons go the opposite direction. And so basically batteries are a chemical reaction that are separated by a separator. And in order for the chemical reaction to occur, it occurs in a controlled fashion with the electrolytes going through the wire and performing some work. And then when you charge it, you drive the um, chemical reaction in reverse. Um, so the problem with this is that you have to have this uh, liquid electrolyte which is flammable and uh, therefore dangerous. And then there's a, there, you need to have this separator, which is porous, and you need to separate it by a decent amount because if the anode and the cathode contact internally, then you have a short circuit and then a runaway reaction. So the, you have to have um, a heavy electrolyte and a large separator, which makes the thing bulkier and heavier. Now, um, what's the difference about um, solid state batteries? So here's, here's how it works. There's several kinds on here. There's a lithium metal uh, battery and a silicon EV cell. But basically this, the difference is, is that there is this solid electrolyte right here. The solid electrolyte. So there's no liquid electrolyte. This is a solid electrolyte. Um, it's usually a polymer or a ceramic electrolyte. And usually it uses sulfides or oxides. Most people are using sulfides. And so the advantage of this is, is that you don't have a liquid, so it's non-flammable. And, um, and this solid electrolyte is very thin. And so, the, um, so there's no liquid and you don't have to have a large separation distance because this uh, solid electrolyte is very thin. And so you have a very compact battery that has um, a lot of capacity for the same amount of weight and space. So this is QuantumScape's um, compilation of the solid state landscape. They're talking about all the different uh, major manufacturers or players in the solid state battery group. There's Toyota, Prologium, Solid Power, Ionic Materials, Samsung, SES, QuantumScape. Uh, they haven't put it, I guess they didn't get factorial energy in there, although factorial energy is one of the major um, manufacturers. The anode is either carbon silicon, and that would be this type of cell or uh, lithium metal. So solid power uh, is using a carbon silicon and a sulfide, and most of these are sulfide uh, separators. QuantumScape says 100% ceramic. They're probably running a ceramic oxide separator. They're, it's a trade secret, so no one really knows, but that's what people are, think that they're running. And then if you look at their cycles, QuantumScape recently had a third party test and they had um, greater than 800 cycles, which works out to about 300,000 miles of, uh, of usage in, a, in an automotive application. So that's a lot of life. And they would lose less than 80% of uh, their capacity over that, 
number of cycles. So the cycling is very good in most of these. You see Prologium's a thousand, Samsung's a thousand. Um, so these are these are quite good. And um, so you can see why uh, people are wanting to pursue this because there's so many advantages. What is the problem with them? One of the major problems is, is because the separator um, has to be very thin, um, it's very difficult to manufacture uh, this. So what they say here in this paper from Nature is um, to achieve practical energy densities, solid state electrolyte layers need to be thinner than 50 micrometers. So 50 um, millionths of a meter. So that's very thin. And so if you have a uh, inorganic solid state electrode like the ceramics, they're very brittle and you can't, uh, you know, usually they do roll, roll to roll manufacturing for large scale battery manufacture. And it's hard to do those because they're so brittle. And so they're, in this paper, they're thinking polymer um, solid state electrodes are better because they could be um, manufactured in this roll format, which makes it a lot easier. The other thing that this paper talks about, which is a major advantage of these, is that solid state batteries are theoretically much easier to do closed loop recycling. And that is the um, holy grail. What you would want to do is when you have a used battery, you crush and separate it and recover the cathode and recover the electrolyte. And you can reconstitute um, a whole new battery um, from an old battery. So you can just kind of endlessly cycle this with minimal inputs and minimal waste. And so solid state batteries, because they don't have the liquid electrolyte and it's easier to separate the components and reconstitute them, they're theoretically much easier to um, recycle, which is another good factor. There's another company called Saku. They are, I don't know how to pronounce this, but um, they're based out of Northern California. And they are going, they are going to build a plant right now, which they're going to make a solid state battery by using um, 3D printing or additive manufacturing. So they feel like by doing that, uh, they can produce these very thin um, solid state uh, electrolyte layers um, without any waste and can scale it much easier. So, you know, we've seen all these um, uh, news stories about how people are planning to mass produce, like Murata is a big Japanese company. They were pretty, supposed to produce um, all solid state batteries in the fall, this fall. Um, I went to their website and I looked all over and there's no confirmation that they've actually produced these. And then if you look in the, uh, um, if you look in the, the text, they're actually manufacturing for wearables. So very small solid state batteries, not automotive scale batteries. And then when you look at um, Toyota, although they are testing a solid state prototype right now, they're not expecting their solid state batteries to arrive until 2025. And that seems like the earliest um, QuantumScape um, makes predictions of about 2025 as well, but they seem to be a little optimistic. Solid Power is saying like 2028. Factorial is saying similar time frames. So whenever time frames are like that far out, like 2025, um, there's a lot that can go wrong. I, I realistically don't expect to see um, solid state batteries until after 2025 at the earliest. But it does seem like it has enough backing from big companies, and uh, there's but the prototypes are working well. I think their biggest problem is scaling, and getting it to um, reliably produce in large numbers, and have it uh, cost effective. But if they could do it, there, again, there's a lot of advantages: much safer, much higher density, uh, cycle life is better, and theoretically costs less. And um, maybe most importantly, very easy to um, recycle and have closed loop recycling. So looking forward to it. I don't think we're going to be seeing these in Apteras um, very soon. Uh, so probably not, uh, probably not widespread use until about 2030 is my guess. Uh, tell me what, if you guys know anything different or what, if you think anything uh, differently, let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching guys.